played since then? Um, yes, I have. Anything you can share or care to share on what he told um, you? Yeah, you know, we didn't talk too much about the game, really. We talked about, um, you know, my college coach is going through a tough time right now and a few other things and, uh, you know, wished him luck this week against San Diego State and kind of talked about those kind of things and talked about his team, talked about, my, you know, our team and kind of where things are going and, and, and that was it. Obviously, without saying what it was, do you get into schematics and what didn't work or did work for them, or do you not talk about that? Eh, not really. You know, typically we would, but there's just there was some things that were more important at the time to talk about, and um, so yeah, we really didn't get into all that. Luke was hired on December the 10th at Cincinnati. You were hired here on January the 3rd. I don't know if you even came in and looked around, but are, were you guys literally two ships had passed in the night when you talked to him Saturday before the game? Will that be the first time you guys have ever spoken to each other? No, no, no. I've seen I've seen Luke uh, before. I've seen him at different events and different things. Yeah. One last thing, uh, Justin had a big game, Jalen Hurts had a big game, Jacob Eason had a big game. You're a quarterback guy, three transfer quarterbacks all had big games. What's the challenge coaching a guy like that who's not recruited, not redshirted in your system, comes in, and obviously uh, Eason redshirted, but you know the challenge of coaching him and getting him up to speed right away that results in the kind of statistical performance all three guys had? I think it's something that we have to get used to in college football, unfortunately. Uh, whether it was Dwayne Haskins for one year, or you know Trevor Lawrence playing last year, or the you know the you know Bo Nix uh, playing you know as a freshman the other day, Sam Hollett, North Carolina, and then and then this transfer situation. So guys are getting on the field early. That just is the trend right now in college football with quarterback play. And so we just got to do a good job. You got to uh, understand how you're how you're teaching concepts, and, and make sure that you know you're not exposing them to too much early on, and build their confidence as they go. Uh, and I do think there's an art to it. I think it's it's important not to uh, put too much on them early on and, and teach them, you know, certain things. And, and then don't get rewarded for bad behavior because sometimes, you know, when you're a really good athlete, you can get away with things that are going to hurt you down the road in bigger, tighter games. And so that's all part of the process. Uh, front row left, Doug. How did you arrive on DeMario as your main return guy, and how do you think he did? I thought he, I thought he was solid. I mean, he was the special teams player of the week for us on special teams, and I think he had 93 return yards. Uh, just missed one to start the game. He got, you know, uh, his heel clipped, I think, right down, you know, right down like the 30-yard line. I, and I thought he was solid. Um, I thought there was a couple that maybe he could have got his hands on on the punts. That uh, it was, it was a funky deal though. They were doing the rugby punt, and he you know, kind of punted the ball across his body, and that's a little bit harder to pick up. Um, and so that was we lost some yardage on that. Uh, but he took care of the ball for the most part. That was his number one job going into the game was ball security, and he did that. Um, so it's a start. It's a start, but uh, we got a new challenge this week. So. Um, overall, I thought he was solid, but, but he can be better too. Um, you, you've said a couple times in different circumstances, you know, f failing is one of the best ways for you to get better. Um, and you know this by now at Ohio State, you know, in the big picture, you guys don't fail much. You have to learn from wins or you're not going to learn anything. You've talked about second team defense or what you guys could have done better to keep it going offensively. How much have you been on the guys? How much do you want to push that? You know, and be hard on them, even in a good win. Or how much do you want to make sure they know, hey, that's a good win? Yeah, that, that's the balance you find. You know, I mean, if, if it gets too negative, you don't want that either. You know, you got to be positive and, and make sure you reward the guys who graded champions and the guys who played with energy and the guys who played hard because there was a lot of that going on. But at the same time, you know, we we have a certain standard here, and there's a lot of guys that didn't play quite up to that standard, and we we got to build on that. And there's a lot of reasons why. Some of it's inexperience. There's a lot of things that come into play. But that's where, you know, week one to week two is a great opportunity. And this is a great opportunity for us to learn from. And we go back to work today. We've got a team meeting at 2.30, practice today. And got to go about getting those things corrected. We did have, you know, our, our practice on Sunday. We do that and, and work through corrections and watch the film. We did our, our, our champions meetings. But this is the art of coaching right now. This is where you got to get it on film. Now it's real. And let's make the corrections and move forward. This is a backwards question, and I apologize. Uh, you and Luke both were sort of like a fill-in head coach here at Ohio State. Um, in those three games for you last year, I know all you cared about was doing the best by the team and winning those games. The idea somewhere in the tiny back recesses of your head that didn't matter as much, how did you balance the, I hope by staying within this structure of Ohio State, I, I hope I can at least give people an impression of that I'd be good at this. Like it's not, it's not my full, this is the Ryan Day full experience, but I want them to know, like, yeah, I can handle that. How, what was that like for you? Well, I, like I said, it was day to day. Um, but 
you know, there, you know, when you have a job to do, you got to fill into that that role. And um, I think sometimes you, you know, you're ready for it. Or and, and so many different things come into play in those situations. And we had a tremendous team, uh, tremendous coaches, tremendous administration that that we all got together and we worked through that. And some great leaders on that team. And so, um, you know, it was those three games. It wasn't easy, but we got through it. We worked through it. But but I think you know when when you're in that role, you know you have to take on that role. You have to wear that hat. It's a different hat than being a coordinator, a position coach, or anything like that. And and so yeah, you have to kind of uh, you know trigger that that job description. And you know that's what I tried to do the best I could. And we're here now. In the end, when you got done with those three games, you won for the program, and that was the most important thing. Did you also feel like yeah, I showed. I showed people who Ryan Day was. Not that that was the most important thing, but you have personal goals too. Yeah, yeah, but I, again, it was just on to the next game for me right at that point. I wasn't really thinking about any of that stuff. And, um, you know, if, if you really start focusing on things like that, you can get distracted. And I, I, I honestly just tried to do the best I could to just focus on, on beating, the, you know, I think it was Tulane the next game and just treat building and keeping the offense going and getting Dwayne going. And, um, you know, when you're in this building, there's so much that goes on. You don't really have time to think much. I mean, it's on the game planning and meetings and practice, and it just kind of goes. And then sometimes when you step out of the building, you realize, you know, you're coaching <laughs> and there's, uh, there's the outside world going on. So uh, not a lot of time to do that. And, and kind of we're getting into that rhythm right now as we get into game two. And final couple individuals. Oh.